Hi and welcome to the Pro Producers Guide in collaboration with Steinberg. Whilst working on this track, I'm going to share some insights into recording, editing, mixing and collaboration in Cubase. This will include things like setting up microphones, recording vocals, recording live elements, editing live elements, including those vocals, mixing and some pre-mastering techniques as well. OK, so there's plenty of things we want to think about before we dive into the recording and paying attention to these early on means that it makes things a lot easier when we come to mixing and editing and so on. So first we're going to look at the uh, devices menu and in there go to device setup and you'll see for our chosen hardware we dive in to a sub menu here you can see that we can actually set the inactive ins and outs, in other words ones we haven't set up already, we can actually disable those, so that can be quite useful for streamlining things. The direct monitoring tick box is something that uh, only works with compatible hardware and allows the software to set up monitoring the signal directly through hardware rather than software. You'll notice that the, uh, the latency shown here, that we go into the control panel, we've set it for relatively low, we've got 64 samples, so the lower the number of samples, the lower the latency, and that will have a bearing on monitoring and certain other things. And also the active um, uh, ASIO guard, basically that actually adds extra buffers uh, in regard to um, your latency. So it's something you may need to be aware of. Um, it can certainly save CPU, but it can add latency then under certain circumstances. We go into VST connections. This is where we set up our ins, outs, and various other things. Um, we set up a couple of outs here, and we're using control room. Control room is really very useful. Um, it can be a little bit complicated to get your head around at times, but once you've set it up, it really makes a lot of difference. Um, you can set it up also in the mixer here, as you'll see, and it allows us to do some uh, interesting things um, in terms of configuring um, the way in which we monitor signals and so on. Here I've actually got it set up with some room correction. Now this is useful because it allows me to run plugins, like a room correction plugin, across a stereo output without it actually getting involved in the export path. We've got some comprehensive metering here, which we'll come back to, um, loudness metering, and also you can actually use it as a way of in effect, controlling all your volumes, ins and outs. I think hardware can sometimes be more beneficial uh, for this. So, uh, but it's useful uh, nonetheless. Now, if we're going to project setup, make sure that you're going to be using things like the right sample rate and the right bit depth. So, project setup. Let's dive in, look at the settings here. Um, as I mentioned, 24 bit, that works perfectly well. I would say that's the ideal recording bit depth. Sample rate, um, yes, you can go up to 96K or beyond, but do you really need to do that? It will certainly use more CPU, so perhaps it's something to think about. Try some test recordings, see what you think, try it with your computer. Now we're going to open the transport bar. I've set the tempo already to 80 BPM, and I've done my drum recording to that tempo. It does make editing a lot easier later on if you actually got a fixed tempo, so rather than just run, running it as a free recording. Um, it's something to worth considering beforehand. Of course, you can set, save your whole setup as a uh, template. So we could set up a whole series of tracks with uh, various inputs, mic inputs and so on, and save it as a template. At the moment, I've got, uh, say, the live hats we mentioned here already, and I've got the drum kit, which I actually set up as a series of tracks within a folder, and this means that when you use uh, the record enable button at the top, it will record and enable all of them at the same time. And we'll come back to some of these kind of group elements and some of the functions that work on groups in a short while. If we go into the mixer now, you'll notice that the hardware appears in its own hardware tab. Only certain bits of hardware allow you to do that. Steinberg uh, bits of kit certainly allow you to do that, which is a very nice touch. We also have the ins and outs here, which have actually set up already in the VST connections. I've set up on this one input, I've set the tuner. So basically any audio that comes in, when I'm actually using, say, the guitar, I'll be tuning that up later on, it allows me to check whether it's in tune. And that's on the input channel. So it's not going to be, um, the tuner's not going to be processing any, any of the audio as we go along, but you'll notice this little amp set up as well, which enables me to play the sound through an amp, and it will record with that. 
That differs from inserting plugins on the actual audio channel that you're recording on, which means they, it won't record with those settings of the plugin. And we'll come to look at that in a bit more detail shortly. Back to the transport bar. Worth noting some of these settings here in terms of the way in which the recording, different recording modes, punching in and punching out, re-recording, start recording, because of this, and so on. There's lots of ways you can customise things. Find a way that works for you, certainly. The record modes, also worth paying attention to, particularly when you're going to be doing comping and doing multiple recording. Uh, keep history, cycle history and replace, replace. If you keep the history, it means it'll loop. You've got the previous audio files there, you can edit them. And the same thing goes for MIDI as well. You can see here, MIDI cycle record mode gives you plenty of options there. Um, I wouldn't suggest actually enabling auto quantize, but play around, see what works for you there. So hopefully that will give you some ideas about what you can do to set up your project ready for the recording and various other things. And next, we're going to be looking at doing vocal recordings so and narrowing it down a little bit more specifically.